So, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, following on from yesterday's top five tips video, which I suggest you go and watch if you haven't already. Uh, I think there's some good info in there and at very least, there's a lot of information in the description from people who actually know what they're doing rather than me. Um, I wanna talk about fitness in golf today. Uh, I'm gonna use the examples of Bryson DeChambeau for how it's gonna affect your distance off the tee and, and your scoring. And then also Scott Stallings, a slightly lesser known pro, um, about how fitness can help your longevity and, and tournament performance. So if we start with Mr. Bryson DeChambeau, the scientist, the slowest player in golf, in October, Bryson said, I'm going to come back next year and look like a different person. You're going to see some pretty big changes in my body. And Bryson has certainly followed through on his promise. He's gained 30 pounds since then, um, from 195 up to 225 now. Um, and he stated that gaining distance off the tee and also resolving back pain that he's had for years due to a childhood trampolining injury as the reason for upping his time spent in the gym. And uh, interestingly, Bryson said that he tried to resolve the, the, the pain from the back injury through just resting, but that had actually made it worse, um, which to me shows that a lot of the time we need to be proactive in tackling limitations through strength and mobility training rather than just leaving them and expecting them to clear up by themselves. If we now take a look at what Bryson's been able to achieve over the few months since he started his bulking period, uh, he's been able to add 11 yards onto his average drive in 2020 versus 2019. Uh, his clubbed speed has gone up to 129 miles an hour and ball speed up to 191 miles an hour. These numbers are from an Instagram post Bryson put up on the 23rd of December. Uh, and I think you should all go check it out because it's, it's pretty cool to see what he's doing. Um, and look, these numbers are ridiculously high. They're even by pro standards at the very, very upper end. Um, the, the 129 club head speed is actually seven miles an hour higher than Bryson achieved at any time during last season. Um, but I would even expect them to, to, to grow into the future. Uh, Bryson said there's no real limit on how big he'll get. Uh, he's just going to take it as he goes. So I would expect to see him this season get into the 130 mile per hour club head speed range. Um, and I think it's also quite funny that he he's really throwing away the notion of there being a set of golf muscles that you should grow uh, and and non-golf muscles that you should avoid growing. If you've ever read Harvey Pinnock's Little Red Book, which if you haven't, I suggest you do, he sort of talks about this notion of having, having certain areas that you should and shouldn't grow. But to me, the results here Bryson are getting, and if you take one look at Olympic weightlifters or... Uh, gymnasts, you'll see big muscular people who are more mobile than the average person could ever, ever look to be. Um, I think we need to get rid of the notion that strength and mobility are, are mutually exclusive. They're not. They can be had at the same time. So if we take a look at the scoring implications of what Bryson has been able to achieve, I think it really starts to show uh, how how it really will benefit his game hitting it longer and, and what sort of we can take away from this example. Um, so the knock-on effect of Bryson's longer tee shot is going to be shorter approach shots and closer proximity to the hole. And providing Bryson doesn't have any kind of short game meltdown like he's had on the driving range in the past, he should be able to knock off about 0.7 shots on average for every round he plays. So if we were to apply this to his 2019 season, this would have reduced his scoring average from 70.2 down to 69.5, which would have actually taken him from 20th in the, in the standings all the way up to 5th. Um, to put that into money terms, Justin Thomas, who came in 5th in 2019, earned around $1.8 million more than Bryson DeChambeau. It's tough at the top. Um, so furthermore to this, the average margin of victory on the PGA Tour is 2.4 strokes. So 
Over the course of a tournament, Bryson's average saving over four rounds would be 2.8 shots. So he's likely to be turning a lot of seconds and thirds into wins just by making this 10, 11 yard increase on his tee shots. And then if we take an example from last year, the 3M Open, he lost by just one shot to my favorite answer to the online swing police, Mr. Matt Wolf. So that would have turned into a win had he had the extra distance off the tee. So obviously what Bryson can potentially achieve this year by uh, the improvements over last year are pretty awesome. Um, but I think it's important to bring it back to how you can sort of see this improving your game. Um, and I think there's two key takeaways from the Bryson example. The first being the law of diminishing returns. So Bryson's difference between 160 and 170 yards in terms of proximity is going to be very, very small compared to the difference for uh, an 18 handicap golfer. So for your average Joe to, to, to gain 10 yards off the tee is actually going to be more significant and more important than it is for Bryson DeChambeau. Um, and then further to that, Bryson's already starting from, from a high baseline. Uh, he already hits it 300 off the tee. He's, he's already in good shape. He's been through the American college system where they train pretty much every day. He's no stranger to the gym. And contrast that with uh, an am amateur golfer who's, whose tee shot's going to be more in the sort of 200 to 250 yard range. Uh, they're not going to have as much experience in the gym. The likely uplift of the same investment in their fitness is going to be more significant. It's going to be more in the sort of 15, 20, 25 yard range which again is going to cascade down um, and, and really help reduce scores in a new way other than just investing in technique or, or in, in just on-course performance. So I now want to talk a little bit about Scott Stallings. Um, he's a lesser known professional but I think what he's done is really, really amazing and it's something we can all learn from. Um, so there's a, a really good title list video on YouTube where Scott just talks through his journey from the health problems he had to investing in, in more health and fitness um, and to finally managing to achieve a 50 pound weight loss, which is pretty awesome, I think. Um, so a bit of background at 29, uh, Scott says he was sleeping all the time, he felt terrible and he was diagnosed with acute adrenal fatigue which basically just means you're tired all the time. Um, so he had a sinus surgery to help his sleep and through working out with a good friend of his he managed to lose 50 pounds and he says now at 33 he feels better than he did when he was 23 which I think is pretty cool. Having had his biological age taken when he was 29 which came out as 42, which is less ideal. Um, so there's a good few things that we can take from, from Scott's story. Um, I think first of all is that investing in your fitness as a golfer doesn't necessarily have to be about hitting the golf ball further. Um, he says that he actually hits it marginally shorter now uh, since, since losing all the weight. And I think a lot of that has got to do with his particular impact dynamics is very steep so he would generally just sort of get his weight in front of the ball and, and trap it into the ground but he said he used to hit a draw and his back would hurt every day from trying to hit a fade which was his desired shot shape and that now by losing the weight um, by being more physically mobile he's able to achieve the shot shape he wants without the pain and without the physical limitations um, Further to this, he said that it's helped him with confidence. This is something I didn't really consider before before reading a, a few articles on Scott. He said that before he had done this, he, he had to sort of prove to himself a lot of times that, that he was worthy of being on tour. He had a lot of doubts throughout his career um, that he should really even be out there, that he, that he was worthy of being with the other guys and that by now being one of the fittest guys out there, it's helped him to be like, yeah, I, I, I am worthy of being here and, and I do have a right to be on the PGA Tour. Um, and then the final thing for Scott Stallings, which I think 
is awesome and we can learn from in our golf but in our life he says there are two things that you control every single day your effort and your attitude and the rent is due on both so next time you go play golf go give it 100% of your effort have the good positive attitude I spoke about yesterday in the top five tips video and hopefully you will be able to achieve some good results so thanks for watching everyone. Um, I hope I've introduced a few of you to the benefits of uh, investing in your fitness as a golfer and I've given others of you the incentive to get into the gym right away that, that had, had your suspicions about how useful it might be. Um, in the next week or so, I'm gonna be doing some more uh, performance related videos. So I'm gonna have one on making your driving range practice a bit more meaningful and I'm also going to have one on pitching practice uh, and how you can can sort of do that and track it very easily because uh, I think pitching is something that doesn't really get a lot of attention but is really really important um, so if you can like and subscribe and I will see you next time